So this little Airbnb is really delightful. I love it. I was a little, a little hesitant about it when we first got here because they make the outside look like it's still just a storage container. And it took a minute for me to notice the landscaping. It took me a minute to notice the paint. It took me a minute to notice that we have a privacy gate. And so I think they were really brilliant with the way that they did this in that there's a lot of razor wire in New Mexico. And um, even though we've never felt unsafe or like there was going to be crime or, or any problem, any violence, it is very normal to see razor wire and high fences and stuff like that. So what they've done is they've taken this little compound and they already have two units here. It's obvious it's doing well for them because they're putting in a third one. And they kind of camouflage the outside. If it's going to, if it's going to have pretty paint on it, they're going to put it into a space where the doors are going to close over that. So you can't really see it if there's nobody here. And it's concrete, it's gravel, privacy fence, and it's simple. It's really simple. And then once you go inside, you're really charmed. When it comes to an Airbnb, the colors make a huge difference. Bright, pretty, happy, cheerful colors. Whichever one you choose, choose it and go with it and stay with it. In this one, they kept it very modern. Modern and easy to clean with a few bright colors. Wonderful furniture on the inside. The furniture inside is wonderful. They have good windows with screens so you can open them. They have a dehumidifier inside and two air conditioners. And everything is just set up. I kind of like the size of it because it has a more normal, functional size kitchen. A larger fridge has a king size bed with an actual bedroom. They have the pretty curtains in the window, the opening screen door so that you feel like you have options. There's a back door, there's a front door, and then there's this lighting glass door. They have blackout blinds. Everything looks new and well made. And in at least here on this one, the owners are over frequently because they're working on the new place. But um, on top of that, I think they just kind of like to come in and check on people. It's nice because all they have to do to contact you is just text you. They don't have to really babysit you. So we talked to the owners yesterday just because they were working on the house, but we didn't feel like we were being hovered over at all. They have good outside spaces with enough chair uh, for people to come sit. Pretty views, no trash, really nice landscaping. So if you're interested in finding some kind of passive income for your home and you have a little shed, a little cabin on the back, um, we've had a wonderful time at all of our Airbnbs. We have felt so much more comfortable there, especially with children, than we do in hotels. There's more room for them to play. There's more privacy. The linens are nicer. It doesn't smell like chlorine. And we have paid less than hotels and a little bit more than hotels. One thing is they did use a dehumidifier. When we first got in, there was um, an interesting smell in the air. And at first I thought it was mold but I don't think it was mold. I think it was the smell of the metal getting warm and um, they didn't have anything turned on on the inside. When we got there, they had them on an automatic setting for, for when people arrived. So they do have a dehumidifier in there and once they started using the dehumidifier, the air cleared up really quick. We left the windows and the doors open and, <clears throat> um, but do remember that these are boxes, metal boxes. And even though they have put in lumber and they've put in insulation, they put in paint, to all intents and purposes, it is a metal box. So it's going to smell a little bit different than a conventional home and it's going to act a little different from a conventional home. The color in. I think one of the reasons that they left the storage containers the way that they did was um, for security. From a distance, they just look like storage units. Because uh, they painted some of the walls, but not all the walls. They painted anything that was going to be under the doors when it closed, or something that was recessed so you really couldn't see it very well. And they have a really nice pad that they poured. It's very nice under your feet. They keep it really well swept. There's a lot of gravel in here. There's not weeds. They do have little, little plantings. Like they have this little tree here. This little tree here that will someday be a fruit tree. And then along their fence, they've used tin as a retaining wall and then a taller fence above that 
not that it would really keep anybody out, but I think it's something of a visual deterrent. It makes it obvious that there are people here often. And then they have cactus along the bottom that they've kept, plus the railroad ties that kind of show this is parking space and this over here is fence. And then they have another fence back here. You can see here along the top and it looks like maybe it's just reclaimed fencing uh, from somewhere else. Maybe they got it, maybe there was some demolition, maybe they got it at a good price, but it's stained, it looks a little old. And then they used, I don't know, they just did some really neat things with their landscaping here. Again, it's New Mexico. Everywhere that we go, there's razor wire. And when I first came in, I was a little nervous, but then I saw the attention to detail, the fact that they do have gates, they do have fences, Nothing here looks like come and take advantage <laughs> of this. And it's obvious that it's doing well because they are putting in the new one. I wanted to show you the landscaping just a little bit. So I don't know how Justin Rhodes does it, holding on to it the whole time, because it just, it just stays right there in your face. But I'm gonna try not to get, so I'm gonna try not showing you my face. So there's the meters, there's the air conditioning units. They have this little swale in here for runoff. And then they have some really pretty bamboo. So the landscaping is actually quite nice. A lot of thought went into this. Okay, so here's their third site that they're putting in. You can see it's just a regular storage container. Here is more really pretty drainage. They're probably gonna turn this into some kind of planting zone because when they do get rain, this is where it's gonna go. But you can see what they're using. They're using old tin. Maybe you can't see it because my head is in the way. They're using old tin. And um, it looks like a lot of it could have been scavenged. And then they're just using an old tractor for a lot of the, the heavier lifting. It's not a new tractor, it's an old tractor. And they're using native landscaping plants so that they're not gonna have to come out and water it every day. And then they are very careful to make sure that the area is well lit at night. And um, they do have windows. And they've made a lot of use of rubber ties. Old pretty logs, old tractor. But I really wanted to show you the fence that they made. They have some, again, native plantings. And then here's their fence. And it looks like what they used was old tin from the actual storage container itself. See that? So they used old, they, they, they used what they cut off of the house to build this. And they have some really neat details. Look how pretty that is. And so they welded this. how nice that is and they have the cactus they saved one of the bigger trees and then here's their footings for the new one okay. looks like they have their plumbing started or finished looks like they have their plumbing finished And that's what it looks like from a distance. It just literally looks like shipping containers.
I would recommend if you're going to do an Airbnb, go stay at some Airbnb. See what you think of them. See what their pictures look like compared to what the inside looks like. See what having the outside well landscaped means for the inside. And I mean, you kind of have to separate those two uh, somewhat just because if you see somebody else's amazing outside landscaping and you're like, well, I can't do that. I live in a concrete jungle. Don't worry about it. If you have good enough landscaping, an amazing enough surrounding, people want to stay there for the surroundings. If you have an amazing enough inside of your house, then people want to stay there for the inside of the house and not for the landscaping. If you can combine both of those, if you if you can combine both of those, then it's a win-win. But don't think just because you don't have wonderful landscaping, you can't do an Airbnb, or just because you don't have wonderful inside doesn't mean you can't do it. Find a way that works for you, and it takes a little bit of ingenuity, but you've got that. So, back to you later. Hopefully you're liking this series. I'm trying to show different ways and different skills that you could use towards creating a, a passive income where you only have to check in maybe half an hour a day and um, that you only really have to be available on your phone. So if you have DIY skills of carpentry and plumbing and that kind of thing, or if you have a cousin who's into plumbing and you're into carpentry, maybe something like this would really work for you. And um, hopefully you enjoy it. Make sure to go check out our Facebook and Pinterest and Instagram. We're trying to make sure we keep up on that. And we're about to go back home to work on our off-grid tiny cabin. And our original uh, purpose when we got the cabin was to turn it into an Airbnb. And for me, it's exciting because I would want to go the glamping direction. I like glamping, which is that you're camping, you're more outdoors, but um, you have some luxuries, you have some comfort, you have some protection from the elements. And so that's what we'll be working on this summer with Darwin from the Honeydew Carpenter. So make sure to go check out their channel and we'll talk to you later.